I I think Nathan feels fine about this matchup, but okay, okay. Uh, it's it's a little surprising to see uh, Icelander here. It is, it is. Chris is uh you know playing a little bit of everything. Josh, how is I was having a debate at the uh, local armory today. And, mm -hmm. um, there's a Dorinthia who is telling me how much she can't stand playing into Ice Lexi, and I was confused by that. How do you think the the Dory Lexi matchup is while we wait for the well, Ice Lexi is. Like if if this if it's the ice Lexi with a death dealer, it's actually pretty annoying. Okay. Um, because if you bring in shunts, which you don't always do, that um, they become very very expensive to pay for. Mm. So, and that's really how you shut down the, all the dominate damage, right? Um, yeah, Lexi is a, is one of the most annoying matchups for Dory actually. Even though you block well, um, you act, it's really difficult to get an offense going. So you kind of just have to wait until they brick and then go for uh, some offense. That's kind of my thought. I was thinking you pretty much just block till the cows come home and then find your window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Dorinthia is all about picking your spots and, uh, you know, going from there. I had to teach, uh, he's a nice guy, he's relatively new, but he's been attracted to Dory. I, I taught him, we played Blitz today, so I taught him how the Prism matchup goes. Mm. And it was good, you know, he, he had some good reactions, but the, the auras just overwhelmed him. Seems like new players don't really grasp Spectra, uh, Spectra right away. Yeah, the the Spectra mechanic is, is difficult to, to conceptualize, and also, like, how do you deal with things that stay on the board permanently? is also uh not not easy to do absolutely all right looks like we're about to get rolling here looks like we have royal briar so this is, this is gonna be royal an exciting briar. match welcome yeah. to the party So, what does the gold coin enable? Well, there are certain things. Um, first of all, the gold coin allows the Briar player to fix hands that have all attacks or all non-attacks. Uh, obviously, the worst one is all non-attacks. Um, it also gives uh, the ability to turn some resources damage. CMH turn, and we could see cash in as well, uh, because cash in is kind of like uh, Gorgonian Tome. Uh, Briar utilizes that card especially well because not only does it draw cards, but it also gives half an embodiment of lightning, which is very relevant. Uh, I hear a lot of people ask, what do you do with the cash ins after you've used your one gold? And really, with Tunic, if you pitch a blue and Tunic counter, it's almost like turning two cards into two brand new cards and half of an embodiment. So there's there's some use for the other copies just after the first one. All right. Um, so it looks like Nathan opted to go first, I believe. Yeah, his Tunic's on one. So we have Bramble Spark into Arcanic Crackle here. Uh, Obviously, the arcane damage is not the most amazing thing against uh, Wizard because they naturally have high AB. Um, but yeah, looks like Nathan just needed to filter some cards. No damage, but Chinook starts a little bit ahead of his opponent and he gets an arsenal here. Very effective uh, so, blocking from that Icelander, which we've come to expect. Yep. Ooh, great start here. Yep, yeah, one of the best... Uh, Starts that you can do. Aether Ice Vein Red. Coming in. I would say coming in hot for five, but it's not coming in hot. It's coming in cold for five. And yep, gonna demand a so if he has a blue, he'd probably just pitch the blue. AB1. And looks like he does. So he's just gonna take four here and move on with his life. Uh probably gonna get a waning moon here as well. And then Arsenal. 
the other card. Yep. Arsenal so, the mystery oh. card. Yep. Good start from Drew Mai. Not Drew Mai. <laughs> Icelander. Uh, I think it's because I'm talking to you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the local illusionist around these parts. That is true. Yep. All right. So uh, in terms of the, let's talk about the, like the macro sense of the game. So this is kind of a a struggle between having. Okay, there's the cash in. All right. Uh, between having a big turn and having a not going all in too much such that you get blown out by heavy disruption from Icelander like hypothermia cmh even blizzard can be pretty devastating because it taxes you a whole blue um so that's kind of the balance nathan's gonna have to strike here um we're all, it's also a little unclear what uh chris's uh deck is like we did see a brother in arms um but I don't think we've seen any other chonky attacks yet. Is that a yellow snatch? That is indeed a yellow snatch. Nathan is All a right. yellow snatch fan, which is funny. I have always said the yellow snatch is the worst mm -hmm. snatch, but he's proven me wrong. Yeah, so Icelander's deck pretty comfortably blocks three. Um, so I guess if you're playing snatch, you're probably playing the lightning presses with it and um, or razor reflexes. Looks like he's going to play around Razor, play around... Yep, so uh, we could see Spellbound Creepers here. Looks like we are. Oh, that is dirty. <laughs> I'm still covering up this uh, this Snatch completely, though, even with that plus three. Yep. So he needs a little something extra to get it over the top, if that was exactly. his intention. Yep, so this could be... Uh... Probably not Force of Nature here, but... Um... This is probably just another attack here. Or a Rosetta oh, into oh, Arsenal. Oh. So I two think floating. from the wizard's perspective, you're just gonna A B all of this as much as you can and get the creepers out of here. Um It does make sense. I'd want to get rid of creepers if I was in Yeah. That. So I'm wondering if that is gonna be the play here. I th looks like it is okay so ab2 and block so this is going to cause the uh creepers to go away here but he didn't deal any arcane damage right uh, unless there was a room chant yeah no that's yep. gone okay but that's all right i don't think he was intending to keep it for too too long if he yeah he had something amazing Mm -hmm. I realized I said make a rune chant and then swing sword there. He is not running those gloves. I was mistaken. Yep. Running the Vexing Cool Hand for the uh, Arcing Barrier and the, you know, Absolutely. it's a good Galad Gauntlet uh, impersonation as well. All right, so Ice Niner is just going to pass back. So Nathan got tempo, but it did cost him his boots. Probably worth it. Um assuming there's not heavy disruption here. So the Icelander player did not play the the Arsenal card the whole last turn. So that sort of indicates that it's it's either, it's probably not that disruptive. That's if I had to guess, or it could be, uh, could be like an attack or something. We'll see. All right. Uh, uh, Another yeah. yellow smash so, on the hand. Well, unless he wants that blue. Yep. Hmm. Um. I I think it's here. It's kind of like a judge because I think there's a go again problem here. Um, I mean he has the embodiment of lightning, but um, taking the snatch might be greedy here because uh, I mean the snatch is good if you have other on hits that are also relevant here. Um, he didn't pay into uh, Sonata, Sonata, so that tells yeah. me he didn't have a blue, at least not one he was willing to expend. Yep. And just like you said, he's only got so many sources to go again, so if he's already mm -hmm. got plenty of good attacks and that snatch is looking... Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
I think taking the blue is a little bit safer here. It kind of insulates you against different things. The uh, one arcane is going to come across here. Um, I'm just, uh, I mean, it, it insulates you against certain things, having that extra blue, but I mean, there's still some things you can't play around, so. Um, I mean, he saw a hypo get pitched, so. There's one less little of that. So it looks like. Little. So it looks like we got, you know, yellow snatches, yellow belittles, brandish as well. This is a pretty spicy deck here. So we did uh, not uh, care about the embodiment because all of these attacks have go again. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually an interesting point is that, you know, hypothermia here is, is basically a blue block two. So, um, Having all these cards with natural go again, pretty good here. Uh, Belittle revealing brandish is pretty good. I, th I mean, they, bad. yeah, I, you're kind of wasting the embodiment of lightning, but it is what it is. Um, as much as note, the uh, embodiment of earth, you know, is a double edged sword in this matchup. Uh, you know, being able to block extra is nice, but it also wants go to the Icelander player. But if the Icelander player responds at the very beginning of your turn, you can probably adjust how you play. Grabbing Red Minnow, he doesn't need more resources. And this is why he grabbed the blue attack, because he now gets the option to grab a Red Minnow mm -hmm. instead of a Blue Minnow. I like it. And this, this is going to be very, very interesting just to see this whole game because obviously Chris is a very, very good player. He got, you know, second at Worlds. But unless you've had a lot of reps on Icelander, there's a lot of tuning and matchup dependent things that you may not be aware of. So even though we are seeing a top level player playing the deck, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, he'll, he'll play this, he'll pilot this matchup perfectly. Um, but I know that he does play Briar, so, you know, that definitely does help. Being aware of the attack patterns is, you know, half the battle. Now, I am shocked we didn't see that min Minnowism into this Brandish, because even though Brandish isn't the biggest on hit, it is one of the few on hits that Nathan runs. Maybe I mean, I th six, think I he's going to play it and then play an attack, because that'll give him a, um, a l embodiment of lightning. So this blizzard's very, very good here. Great point. Um, probably going to have to, t depending on what his hand is, he may have to tune it for this. Oh, looks like he has another blue. Look at so, that. Grabbing the extra blue just to have mm -hmm. the insulation, like you said earlier. Yeah, so he's played Sonata, right? So if he plays another non-attack, he'll have go. So he can go non-attack, an attack with no go again, and then sword swing. And that would work pretty well, I think. Um... Frost X Brain Freeze jumping in front of this attack. Are we winning? Um, we well, are, just we are currently attack. in the middle of the game. <laughs> On a three attack? That's no, that, he has CMH is out. So I think oh, we're going to see a non-attack uh, here. Non-attack, make an embodiment of lightning. Attack, Rosetta. Okay, looks like we're not. Okay. Huh. So one card sort of wasted here at the end here. He's also um, got two Earths in his pitch zone, so he still has another Channel mm -hmm. Mount turn next turn. Yep, that's true. Well, that, that's so this, lovely. So this is one of those instances where holding, you know, holding the rabble for next turn might be better. Yeah, I, th I mean, he he definitely held the. Uh, well, that's he kept really a good. Minnow with him. I just, and, yeah. I'm curious yeah, so, about that. So he has Brandish. He has Belittle. He has Rabble. These are three cards that can still. Uh, fight through this hypothermia here. If not, we're probably just going to see several non-attacks. Yep. Like that. So, fused Bramble Spark here. Probably no response from the Icelander, if I had to guess. The hypothermia is sufficient disruption already. So life total slightly in Nathan's favor. Equipment status. I mean, counting that the crown of 
Dominion is uh, essentially a gold token. Probably is favoring Icelander here. So still a pretty even game here, I would say. Oh, here comes another cash in. Very interesting. Cash in trying to find some uh, non-attacks. Or sorry, some attacks with Gorgon. Now, this embodiment of lightning isn't actually doing anything this turn. No, so he'd love to just go with like a rabble brandish or belittle here into another seven attack because i mean the, the cmh has been okay it's pumped it's not uh, bad. Three, it's pumped three attacks so we're good okay looks like we're gonna pay into this i think we're really digging here digging we are digging we're, <laughs> we're digging we're for diamonds for these uh natural go again cards here Paying into Sonata. Sonata, I always think is correct. Two non attacks there. Bramble Spark, and we can't see what the last card is. Oh. Overload, okay. Okay, got yet. the Overload. I believe Overload has go again. It yep. has Natural Dominate on hit go again. Go, so yeah, it does not so, have Natural go again. Ah, uh, okay. So, hmm. Um. Well, looks like... Okay, so he took the arcane damage. That is a little bit of... Uh, well, now we just stack the damage. Oh, Belittle. Oh, Hello, he... Belittle. And he gets to reveal. Oh, it's so good. That was kind of tricky from Nathan there. Like, he, he acted like he desperately needed it. He needed a three attack. <laughs> and maybe he, he was could just... have been screwed by a zero before, for four there. Maybe he was just looking for the uh, card to reveal. All right, so yellow belittle. I'm gonna grab probably a hmm, probably a red. I would, probably I a red if he's got say. another. Yep. Looks like that that was a red, right? Um, I think that was actually right. a blue, but I'm not was sure. It? Okay. Anyways, uh, sure. The blue gives him some like that Arsenal card has been there. Three turns, two or three oh, turns yeah. now. Crazy. I've never seen an Iceland who's been on our soul that long. I'm wondering what that is right now. It's it could be like a, you know, wounded bull. We haven't seen any indication that he is on. I haven't seen one big attack yet. Blander plan yet, but, um, I mean, this could just be a heavy ice disruptive deck here. tunic energy for blizzard another two okay another blizzard here now we're uh, glad now we're yeah, glad we grabbed that blue if it was a blue yeah thank god he grabbed the blue so the blue will uh pay for this uh but can he still have a turn here probably he can, he can still red uh minimalism into overload since it costs zero and he'll have one float mm -hmm. yep All right, blocking for three, taking four here. Fourth. Okay, it looks like he opted to not pay for it. Interesting. Does he still and... have that red minimalism? Hmm. I'm not exactly sure. I can't quite see the color strips properly, but I, th I think he had a blue there, so I think he could have used his blue to uh, <clears throat> go with the overload. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out soon. All right. Aether Ice Vein in the Arsenal. All right. This is another instance of give him your blue. Continue with life. So, you know, Cold Snap is in the Arsenal. That is not that deceptive. That's why the Arsenal was sitting there so long. It was a red Aether. Okay. Yep. And looks like Nathan says, I do not care. I have a dead card. Goodbye, CNC. That is indeed dead when he just has a repulsive right, we'll see. blue it's ice. Cold, cold Snap is one of those cards that, you know, gains a good benefit from blocking or from the embodiment of Earth activating here because you can't even play out your arsenal. 
Um, Nathan says, I need that. I will pay. Is that red minimalism? Plays another red, then it was a red he grabbed. Oh, it was red. I was wrong before. Okay, okay. so he grabbed the red. Okay, that makes much more sense. Okay, so this is basically the remnants of it. Um, this is just fine. Nine with dominate on hit go again into a sword swing. I'm not mad yeah, at that. That is not bad at all. Um, Already has go again. Yeah, th this turn cycle. Uh, This turn cycle, I don't think either player really particularly won out, but it did just lower all the health lower. <laughs> and uh and the player who's forcing the game to a conclusion thing. here. Sink below here. Alright. Gonna fix his hand. Let's find out. So he's got uh Two floating. Obviously, the Storm Striders can provide the AB for this. So, we're going to see the. Uh, I guess he might. I, I don't think there's any world where you actually waning moon with this two. Um, but prolonging the game may not actually be good. <clears throat> There is a world where you waning win with this two resource only because Ice Center has three cards in hand, so they could waning damage, yeah. exactly. So he oh. could waning moon, pitch another card to stop the arcane, block with another mm -hmm. card, and dish arsenal on his turn. Okay, looks like he's opting for the three damage there. Um, so he's gonna have his turn with two cards. Um, I'm curious if this is just a coronet peak or okay, a scar. That makes sense. Okay, so I mean the go again here is not very relevant though, right? Um, scar it, it is only due to the fact that if Nathan blocks, he can get coronet peaked afterwards, um, mm -hmm. which can be pretty pretty bad if you block incorrectly. Right. I think if I'm Nathan here, I'm just taking that four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 26 and Unless 22 life, bucks. Not a big difference here Especially when there's no Frost Hexes and Chills on the board mm -hmm. Icelanders super threats don't start happening until you're sub-10 life Ooh, that's a good block not attacks the block for four. I heard you can cover good. it up with one card. I suppose you block it. Polar blast. The first card to get replaced as soon as a supplemental set gives. Icelander, a ice blue card. <laughs> Does have that draw effect. It has a draw, but I mean, you basically are just getting oh. a one Wait, frostbite is for one. Again? Frostbite doesn't satisfy that requirement. No, uh, but the on hit does. The on hit oh, would here. The on hit does, that's right. I and mean, knowing Nathan, he likes to play presses into Icelander. Mm hmm. Fishing for information here. If the Briar player doesn't block this, that means he has to block the Swarming for three. If the Briar player does AB this, he doesn't have to block this because there's no Sword Swing coming. Exactly. Assuming that Nathan does not want a Arsenal. This is actually a pretty clever move here. So indicating that he wants to use... I think that actually is a, a tiny misplay there from Nathan. I would have um, I would have uh, Stop just AB'd it. it. Yeah. Because it it's it's like a prisoner's dilemma game there. You just have to assume that they're gonna be 
because Nathan had to act first, you just have to do, you just have to AB at first. Um, that's, you know, the power of wizards acting at instant speed as they actually get more information. And a good player obviously can make use of the information. So it looks like we have confirmation that this is the bull lander. Um, I mean, another good, I mean, another reason logically for Nathan to have a bead that is because the Icelander player probably wants to send an attack, but it means they don't want an embodiment. So knowing that your opponent wants you to have no embodiment, therefore you should have a bead that. All right, CMH number two coming out, hitting the field here. And looks like we got an overload. Six on hit dominate. Or sorry, dominate oh, on hit go again. Oh, oh. Um, let's see if uh, Chris has one of those uh, fabled sink blows in Arsenal. Uh, we did hit, We did see him uh, use one, so it is in his deck list. Obviously, if he has it in hand, Cornet Peak plus uh, sink blow would probably jump in front of this. Uh, because... If he doesn't, this is going to be Rosetta for four here. Actually, maybe not, because if you take Tunic Energy in response, it can give you a Frostbite. So, yeah, that kind of is annoying. So this, this is, this is you know, sometimes I talk about you got to play on your opponent's level. This is why I like to not rush too quickly into a matchup. I need to see how my... I think they're both getting a good idea of, like, I can't really cut corners against my opponent. So we're going to see kind of a little bit of a... This hasn't been the fastest match. This hasn't been the slowest match. I think we're still in that kind of trying to feel each other out a little bit. I think it's also very highly likely that the Icelander has a red attack in his arsenal here. Mm -hmm. Um... Not responding to channel was just a clear sign of that, usually. Yeah. Um, this is really just showcasing the depth of this game. Like, um, like what do they say at the poker table? Everything you do conveys information. CMH, does this resolve? Yes. Okay, that conveys information. <laughs> exactly. The, the best thing Icelander can do is, is start with a waning moon in, in certain scenarios. Just well, really just feel out your opponent. Giving out the tunic here, probably not the worst thing in the world here. Um, is that a block for six? That is a block for six. So, so it's still going to get three, right? Or is that no? no the overload has three power. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that was completely necessary because uh, assuming that there's an ice card in Arsenal. If not, then that I'm play does make a lot of sense. I'm fairly certain it's a red attack. Yeah, looks like we're about to play it out. I hope it's our third red Aether Ice Vein. That would be a bummer. <laughs> Arsenaling red Aether Ice Vein when your life total is as low as the Icelanders is can be a death sentence sometimes. That means you have to kill with the Storm Striders. Essentially. Okay, pitch stacking here yeah. for the Fendel's Fighting Spirit. Well, he just had an extra red in his hand that he wasn't using, um, and yeah, there's no, no reason to hang on to that. Not a bad seven. Yep. I think Nathan, unfortunately, is going to have to take this. Um, with, so channel mount, with channel mount five cards and tunic counter, it's not really unfortunately. It's just <laughs> it's just usually correct um, because all you all he has to do is threaten, you know, fifteen to twenty damage on the Icelander's turn. Um, and not get blown out by a hypothermia. Um, that's that's the card that Nathan's scared about. Is the last card in his hand. A Twelve is the kill range, though, so that's a little scary. Yes, mm, with no, but with no, uh... with no, yeah, it's it's not as scary when you're Briar because Briar just efficiently pumps damage um, without having to get rid of cards in hand. But without Nathan having no AB, it's not too relevant. But Toma Harvest here, ooh, that's so good. And he didn't respond to the Tome. Good. Oh wait, I forgot the card goes on bottom first, so he can still respond. I think whether or not you have a response here, you take a second to think about your your play. Um, as this is probably the most important turn of the whole game.
And this is this this turn is actually where we're gonna see if Chris is a good player, or if he's a good player and a good Icelander player. Uh, depending on how he navigates us. We're about to find out. This is an important one. Ooh, channel eight. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. But pretty Nathan's good. gonna have a five card Nathan hand here, so the odds of him having a blue are sky high. Yep. also giving him another blue um if it's an earth card it's just going to let him keep cha channel like uh or sorry channel map uh for longer so nathan now has full information about the level of disruption of this turn and he could plan his hand out to maximize damage and arsenal card probably oh. um, get another earth card in the and pitch, hopefully so another bad. earth card into the bin here um Everything is fairly faced up here, unless uh, Icelanders get crazy with Storm Striders. I could have another Blizzard. I think we've only seen two. So, assuming that the Icelander player has a six block in hand, and he wants to arsenal one of these cards, he's effectively at 21 here. So, three seven power attacks would present lethal. The Vexing... Quill hand also can throw off the math here, but um, it's probably not worth paying one for the CLF for that. You definitely don't get rid of the vexing until you know that you're yep. safe. Mm -hmm. He's play playing safe. out. Okay, so he's got the blue. Yep. So this basically is going to demand a full block from. I mean, not having armor here. I uh, should only have. Oh wait, no, he had tunic counter. Yeah, so he still has two resources. Means, this yes, means this, this means he has to eight block this. If Nathan gets two attacks here, this could go infinite here. Oof. Or near infinite. Oh, have that reveal. Have that reveal, baby. What's the brandish? A little brandish. You're gonna grab a blue here, probably, almost certainly. If he wants any chance of powering through this channel, like he's, he's going to need a blue. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Needs to shuffle his deck. Sometimes I forget to do this on TTS as well. Um, okay. Anyways, the uh, so that means the next was Force of Nature fused. Uh, I mean, it, it should have been. Not, it was not. Unless he had a reveal. It was. So, uh, no, because he, he had to pitch the so for it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, it's still still good. Not going to get plus one, but the difference between seven and eight here probably doesn't matter. Uh, I think the Icelander player is in a lot of trouble here. Okay, there he shuffled the this. The fact that these are threatening draw is a big problem. Yep. Um, <laughs> picking up the deck <laughs> They assert dominance. <laughs> this is a really rough situation for the Icelander. Because yeah, he's because already he... used all of his armor, and so every attack here could just be lethal. He's Wait, only going to get to block one of them. Problem, right? This is for six. So... Yes, it's going to be for six, yes. The, the fact that he has to... Hmm. Well, he can only block one attack, so he has to choose which attack he's going to block. That's that's the big thing here. Generally, so... He knows there's a Brandish, he knows there's a Blue Minnowism, but he doesn't know the third card, uh, but it's most likely some sort of attack. Um, there's no on hit, like, if Snatch is... If Nathan draws Snatch, he's... All right, trying to get more information here. Force of Nature triggers, allowing Nathan to draw a card here. Um, CLF, a good card, but not when your opponent has access to six energy, yeah. played three cards, and still has four cards in his hand. He, he, has, he has technically had five cards played or pitched this turn and still has a full hand. I love the belittles in this matchup. So good. And then all these natural go agains are really shining. Yep. Natural go again. 
kind of doing like this is, I'm getting like chain vibes here. Um, yeah. Like going three attacks wide is not something Briar does every day, but Chain did that, you know, every day basically. Um, if this is another attack, okay, it's not. Super we have another go again. Okay. Attack would have been a huge, chunky amount of uh, cards in the banish zone here. He did right. leave. He did leave the uh, Icelander player sure. with one card. Um, which means that he can coronet peak to keep the don't know why the channel oh, okay, he's just pre doing it. Okay, let's say he could. This needs have... to be some god tier disruption here. Oh, wait, yeah, that end up getting that extra earth card to keep that channel around, which is great. Yeah. So, both of Nathan's CMHs have been excellent. Um, not expensive nimbleism here. I think that last card in his arsenal is actually going to be quite good because he pitched a yellow ice vein, which is actually could have been a kind of a get out of jail free card. Um, but it, I mean, it could really hurt your opponents. Um, opponents mm -hmm. channel mount turn, but this is tough. He is not have access to tunic counter anymore. He is firmly on the back foot here. Would you would you break quill hand here? There's no threat. Of, you uh... you you don't do it until you think you have lethal. Okay. Um so like because if 12 is the kill range, right? You don't break it to start off with cuz then you could just die. Is um, 12 the kill range? So 3 from waning moon, 5 from plus te te technically like I think 15 or 13 I think is the most that you can do. Right, five, five, five three. Four, three. Um, oh, is it five, five, three? I thought it was five, four, three. Okay. Um, it could, it could be without, without Epot, and uh, I've never, I've never done the math. But double channel mount heroic with a snatch uh, for go again is, is, is quite good. Oh uh, dear. This, <laughs> this is a let's see, three, six, nine, thirteen power snatch uh, with one arcane attached to it. It's like um, the tales of Arya all over <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, this, that's, oh, this, is uh, quite fun. <laughs> this this should be game unless the Icelander has something in, like very massive, uh, because even if he has Blizzard, nine block is not enough to to really stay alive here. Now I will admit I'm very happy to see Nathan doing well here. I was kind of nervous at certain points in this match. It seemed like the Icelander was having good stuff, but Nathan's just been slow and steady, and now not so slow. Very, very big it, and strong. His, his deck has has shown why Natural Gogan and Belittle are so good. Uh, Brandish is a card that you know on paper looks like it's designed for warriors. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like any sword user can use it pretty well. And as small as the affected effect is, it is an mm -hmm. on hit. Yep. All right, so I guess we're seeing a Storm Striders activation here, probably, right? Because if you block this, you just lose to. Uh, I think if you 12 block this, you actually just lose the game because uh, you take one. Yeah, that's natural that, draw. Yeah, so it's that's what his opponent's doing right now is in the math on that. <laughs> no. um, the, one of the best, to here. Yeah, I think that's down the whole hand here. Taking he's still two. gonna take two, and now I he has nothing to actually, block the just sword. To draw the sword swing. Yeah, he's uh, like, vexing cool hand here, and then um, or just oh, that, 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 that makes even worse. Yep, GG. GG. Wow, good game. Well played from Nathan. That was um, a lot of channels. That is a pretty textbook wow. uh, way to play Briar there. Roy or Briar um, at that. If Boy. you want to learn how to play Briar, that is a good game to study. Um, anytime you can kill a wizard, Storm Striders, that is, that means, right? I mean, he never even got to break them. Probably wasn't mm -hmm. a very conducive hand for breaking them, but... That's that's a. I'm curious as to what was did do we ever show what was in his arsenal? I don't think he did. Nah. We'll find out in a minute. Hmm. GG's to oh. both players. That's a good game. Looks like, looks like uh, Alex, you're gonna be up. 
Yeah. Oh, oh god. For the guys who don't Very know in, in chat, we have Alex going next, and then we have Josh as the anchor. So you don't want to miss two really good matches coming up. So please stay tuned for some Roll awesomeness. Tide. Oh my god. <laughs> we got okay, there. Okay. Little, <laughs> okay. Double channel. Hey. Dude, all of your channels were so good. Well, it's like so. It's like I play them for a reason. <laughs> okay, okay. So like there were Nathan's a lot of lots of broken cards. <laughs> there was a there was a lot of moves, right? Where like I did an inefficient thing because like what have could have been like for example that first sonata on my first channel when I grabbed the earth blue instead of the snatch when I already had an embodiment. It's like the most efficient play is obviously to grab the snatch and then play the embodiment because the two cards in my hand already had go again. But then that blizzard. But then, not not just a blizzard, but a hypothermia just turns my turn off. So I was like, you know what? Screw that. Let's um, let's play the two that have guaranteed go again, and you know, at worst, we'll keep the channel around and do it again, right? And um, and so that's. I, I was just gonna say, Brandish, looks like I remember you were like, I need more. Broom, I, I hope LSS prints more Broomblade cards with Go Again, and they didn't do it. And then you're like, "That's fine. We'll grab that dish. That works." No. <laughs> that work. so, so, so here's the thought process behind Brandish for chat. So it's mm -hmm. actually it has nothing to do with the Go Again. There's actually better Go Again cards like Promise of Plenty, things like that. Here's mm -hmm. the big brain part. If I hit a Fi or a Mirror Match or somebody with with a Brandish. They cannot ask me, is that all you got? That's why I really play it, because the Brandish pumps the Rosetta to three, which means they don't get the draw on that's all you got. That's pretty good. I never thought that about that. That is uh, very smart. <laughs> that That is the main reason, because like there's just a lot of like one cost go again cards, but that is the reason why I picked that one was because I realized that in a lot of the aggro mirrors, I was losing a lot of leverage in the moves where they could stop just heal for two free damage and then draw a card and if it's a deck like Fi, you know no they matter what some. they can always use the card and it just always felt bad but i was like let me present an on hit effect which if i get a card then like great then i'm winning that exchange if they give me any card so unless it's like a crappy blue when they already have one so uh, that's the real reason i'm on brandish currently in my royal briar deck but i hope everybody enjoyed that match i know i did that's an, it's a match i've been nervous about actually and i've been um shout out to to ethnic smoke and his youtube channel um he's been working with me a lot on that matchup and he's been a huge huge resource in uh figuring that matchup out and uh couldn't have got there without him for sure